Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5, Radians, Arc Lengths and Sector Areas. Now hopefully you're already familiar with the idea of a degree. If you have an angle of 1 degree, that means it's 1 3 60th of the way around the circle. So if you had 360 degrees, that would be a full spin. Now radians, however, has a very different definition. Now if I was to go an angle of 1 radian, shortened to one rad, that would actually be one radius of the way round. So if this was the radius r, then basically if you rotated one radian, you would have spun one radius around the circle. And we'll see why you might want to do this in a second. Now we know that the circumference of a circle is two pi r. So we would have two pi lots of the radius to do a full spin around the circle. And that means that the 360 degree full spin here would be equal to the 2 pi lots of radii we can go around. Because if one radian rotates r around the arc length, then 2 pi radians would rotate 2 pi lots of the radius around, so that would be a full spin. So 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. And equivalently, that means 180 degrees would be equal to pi radians. And you need to remember that, that pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So let's do these first problems here. We want to convert from degrees to radians. If we had 90 degrees, well, let's think about fractions here. 90 degrees is half of 180 degrees, so it would be half a radian. So half pi radians, or you could write pi over 2 radians. What about B? 135 degrees. Again, let's think about fractions here. 135 degrees is 3 quarters of 180 degrees. So therefore, we'd have 3 quarters of a radian. So always think what fraction of 180 you have. And then you do that fraction of pi. C, if we had 60 degrees. 60 degrees is clearly a third of 180 degrees, so it's a third of pi. Then converting the other way around, if we had 2 pi radians, then we saw above that's just 360 degrees. If we had 3 over 2 pi, well, we want 3 over 2 lots of 180 degrees. Well, half a lot of 180 degrees is 90 degrees, so 3 halves would be 270 degrees. And then finally, pi over 6 radians. Well, a full pi radian is 180 degrees. We've got a sixth of that, so it's a sixth of 180 degrees, which is 30 degrees. So I think it's worthwhile remembering common fractions of pi in terms of their equivalent degrees. So pi over 2, that's half of 180, so 90 degrees. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Pi over 4 would be 45 degrees. These are common ones that you should memorise offhand. Now we can solve trigonometric equations by giving our solutions in terms of radians rather than degrees. If you haven't seen the video on solving trigonometric equations, then please watch that first because I'm going to assume you have here. So we want to solve 2 cos squared x plus 1 is equal to 5 sine x. And our interval here is 0 to 2 pi. So remember that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. So what would we usually do? Well, we have a cos squared x here, so remember that we could use the trig identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, so we can replace this with 1 minus sine squared x. And now we have a quadratic type equation in terms of sine of x. So if I expand this out, and now let's move it all to one side, I'm going to move it to the right hand side so that this squared term is positive. We've got 2 sine squared x over here, we've got the plus 5 sine x. And then 2 plus 1 is 3, which we, if we move over is minus 3. And then we could make a substitution like let y equal sine x, but I'm just going to factorise it straight off. So two things at times to give 2 sine squared x. We've got 2 sine x and sine x. And then two numbers at times to give minus 3, but we need to get that 5 sine x. Well, if we make this plus 3, that gives us 6 sine x. And then if I put the minus 1 here, 6 sine x minus 1 sine x is 5 sine x. So I've just factorised this quadratic here. And that means that either sine of x is equal to half or sine of x is equal to minus 3. Now remember, sine of x only gives you values between minus 1 and 1. So that's okay, 
but there's no way that sine of x could give us minus 3. If we try to do inverse sine of minus 3, we would get a math error on the calculator. Now, if we want our calculator to give us solutions in radians rather than degrees, well, we could leave it in degrees and then convert those solutions to degrees to radians, but we can get solutions in radians directly. If you go to Shift Setup, if you're using a class width, for example, and go to Angle Unit, and then choose radian, that means whenever it uses sine, cos, or tan, it's going to use radians as a unit there. So now we want to get rid of that sine, so we do inverse sine of both sides, and if you do inverse sine of half, then it gives you a sixth pi. Now we want to get all solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Now do you remember that for sine, if you want to get an extra solution, you subtract that solution from 180 degrees. But thinking about radians, we know that 180 degrees is pi radians. So to get the other solution here, we just need to do pi minus that. 180 degrees minus that is pi minus that. So we do pi minus a sixth of pi. That will give us 5 six pi. And that will be the other solution to this equation. If we wanted to get more solutions, we could add 360 degrees to both, which is the same as adding 2 pi. 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. However, that would be outside the range, so we don't want those solutions. Now, before I go on to the next question, I need to teach you some new formulae. Notice I said earlier, if we were to rotate one radian round, we would move one radius around the circle. So that means if I was to move, say, two radians, I would move two radii around. And if I was to move, in general, theta radians, then I'd move theta lots of radii around. And that gives us our first formula, that the arc length, if theta is in radians, is equal to r theta. So if I just draw a diagram for that, if the radius is r and your subtended angle is theta, then this arc length here will be r times theta. And what about the area of this sector? Now, I just tell you, without proving it, although I do prove it in my sides, that the area of the sector is equal to half r squared theta. Now, you've seen formulae for these in degrees at GCSE, for example. You know the arc length would just be theta over 360 times 2 pi r, and sector area is theta over 360 times pi r squared. But if theta is in radians, then it simplifies to these much simpler formulas here than if we were in degrees. And it's because of these simple formulas that we end up with all sorts of interesting results from this, like small angle approximations, for example. So let's actually do some questions with these formulae here. We've got 0.8 radians here. And let's just say that this is a radius, which I forgot to put in, of 3 centimetres. Then firstly, what is the arc length of AB? So the length of this curved line here. Well, we can just use the arc length formula r theta. So the arc length would be equal to r, which is 3, times by the feet in radians, which is 0 0.8, and that just means the arc length AB would be 2.4 in centimetres. Then part B is the sector area OAB, so the area of this whole shape here, including that shaded area and unshaded area. Well, again, we can just use this formula here. So half times r squared, so 3 squared, multiplied by the angle in radians of 0 0.8. And if I just put that in my calculator, I get 3.6. And the unit, because that's in centimetres, will be centimetres squared. And then finally here, the area of the shaded segment. So this shaded segment here. Well, we can use this sector area here because we can start with the sector and then can you see that if we just cut out that triangle, we'll be left with that shaded segment there. Now, what's the area of a triangle? Well, you might remember the formula half AB sine theta, where if you have sides A and B, theta is the included angle between them. And this still works in radians, by the way. If the feet is in radians, you just need to make sure, because you're doing sine of that angle, um, that you need to be in radians mode. So there's an R at the top of your calculator. So if you do half times A, which is that side there, times B, which is also 3 centimetres, because it's the radius, times by the sine of the included angle, the angle between the A and the B, which is 0 0.8. And if I do that... That gives me 3.2281. Now, the area of the segment 
is just the difference between those. So we start with the area of the whole sector, which is 3.6. We minus the area of that triangle, which was 3.2281. And if I just do 3.6 minus answer key, you get 0 0.372 centimetres squared to three significant figures. And then finally, a question which is not too dissimilar, but it's from an exam paper. We've got, we've got this triangle here with a sector inside it. We've got 0.7 radians. That's a right angle, but it's not necessarily isosceles, even though it looks like it. This is nine centimetres. We firstly want to find the length of the arc AB. Well, this one's easy because we can just use this formula directly. If you want to find that length, it's just R, which is 9, the radius, times by the angle, theta, which is 0 0.7, and that gives you 6.3 centimetres. Then next we have find the area of the sector OAB, so this sector here. Again, this is easy because we can just use the formula directly. So the sector area is equal to half times r squared, so 9 squared, times the 0.7. And if you do that, you get 28.35 centimetres squared. What do we have next? Find the length of AC. So we want to find this length. We can't assume it's 9. It might be similar to 9, but we can't assume that. Now, this is just going to be simple trigonometry. If we just look at this as a right-angle triangle, we've got 0.7 here radians and we've got the 9 here and we want to find AC which I'm just going to call X. So we can use what we'd usually do, we label these sides in terms of the angle. Now this side is opposite that angle so I'm going to label in a circle if over opposite. This side is adjacent to that angle so I'm going to label A in a circle. Now O and A, sob cad toa, it's tan isn't it? So we use tan, tan of the angle and obviously, because we're doing tan of an angle, or if we do sine of an angle, cos of an angle, we need to make sure, if the angle's in radians, that we have that R at the top of our calculator, we're in radians mode, is equal to opposite over adjacent, so x over 9. And if we multiply both sides by the 9, we get x is equal to 9 tan 0 0.7, and that gives you 7.581. So and then finally, find the area of this shaded area here. Now we've already found the area of this sector here, so we just need to do the area of the triangle and then subtract that sector to leave that shaded area here. So let's find the area of the triangle. Well, because it's a right angle triangle, we can just use that as the base and that as the vertical height, half times base times height. So we've got half times the base of 9 times the height, which was 7.581, and that is 34.11 centimetres squared. And then we just have to do that triangle minus the sector. So the area of H is equal to 34.11 minus the area of the sector, which we worked out was 28.35, and that gives us 5.76 centimetres squared to three significant figures, and we are done.